the studio Woodlawn Hospital for their monthly report as we welcome uh, Brad Rogers. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Gorgeous outside. I'm glad you brought the sun with you. I had worked on that all day yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It took most of the day, but yeah, I got yeah, it done. I'm glad you finally got there. Yeah. Oh, well, we're, we're actually going to warm up, they say, too, to mid-50s today. You know what? It'll be nice to watch a ball game or something in the <laughs> evening and not have to have a winter coat uh -huh. and two blankets yeah, yeah. and gloves and, and sock caps. Yes, absolutely. The kids so, out there freezing. Yeah, totally agree. So what's happening at Woodlawn this month? Well, we have uh, we just had our board report yesterday, so we can go over a little bit of that. And, and we really got a lot of things going on here in the last two months, so we'll do a quick rundown. Um, financials. Um, overall, for the month of uh, March, we had a $133,000 operational income and you know we've talked about it a couple times here our goal has always been to get to the point where we were having um, a profitable month based on operations and not some of those other things that we get out there because yeah. you never know when governmental entities change what <coughs> resources are out there and available and those things could go away yeah. so um, we've done that now for the last several months in a row and we're, we're pretty proud of that awesome um, net income for the month was about three hundred and sixty-nine thousand uh, dollars due to that other non-operating revenue. So for the year to date, we're running at about one hundred and ninety-one thousand dollar operational profit, um, and about a one point one million dollar net income for the uh, first quarter, which includes all that other additional money. Gotcha. So, awesome. Awesome. Um, and that's pretty substantial because we were projecting um, about a two million dollar. Um, uh, sorry, about a $1.7 million loss mm. as of this point in time. Okay. Uh, most hospitals, if you look in the news, they're, uh, this year is projected to be a very bad year for most hospitals. So um, we're working real hard over there. The team's done a great job. And so we're about $2 million above where we thought we'd be. Wow, that's awesome. So doing a great job. Every, everybody on the team's doing excellent work. Um, part of that is because our, our volumes are up. Mm -hmm. um, our swing bed continues to exceed our budget. Uh, that is our rehab to home program. Um, get get people in, get them tuned up, and get them back home safe and sound. Um, and physician office visits, our imaging department, pretty much every outpatient service, um, we've seen a significant uptick in the last few months. And I'm going to guess it's because finally people are uh, starting to feel a little more normal, relaxed, getting back to. Uh, yeah, we hope so. Yeah. Wanting to come back to the offices and do do doctor visits that way yeah you know things like your, your standard uh, requirements uh, colonoscopies and mammograms and all of those things that are screening procedures um, people are getting back and doing those um, annual lab work those kinds yeah. of things so we hope so we hope that for the community too because it's so much easier um, to get to something early <laughs> and uh, deal with it than it is to wait a year right. or two down the road and, and it could be much much harder to, to work with yeah. so um, you know, give us a call if you need us, we'll get you in. But yeah, we're happy to see the trend where people are starting to come back and get their services taken care of. Um, update on the construction project, um, roughly move in date about June now. Uh, you know, you, you ever feel like you're playing darts with a spinning uh, circle? Um, sometimes that happens. And that does get that way, especially lately in construction, uh, where, you know, the last couple yeah. of years we've talked about that. that just getting products, getting stuff in. Yeah. yeah, getting products has been a significant challenge, um, you know, during the construction project, and and uh, so uh, that that's where we're at. But we will be in there before July the first. Um, but uh, what year? <laughs> you know, Randy, why don't I get back to you next month on that one? <laughs> we're working through it. It is going to be beautiful. Yes. Um, so we will have an open house when we get that date nailed down, and, and we'll get get that to you that's good i'm sure sure others are looking forward to that as well yes yes absolutely it, it's it really is beautiful so um, we're looking forward to that um another thing we did yesterday in the uh, board meeting and speaking of the schaefer building um board approved us to upgrade some of our imaging equipment so mm -hmm. our x-ray machine that we have there now which is a pretty good machine to begin with digital x-ray imaging and all that we're upgrading that pretty substantially so that we can do a lot more tests in that location uh -huh. So um, looking forward to that. That'll be done about three to four months. It'll take some electrical changes and then yeah. putting in new software and things like that. But you'll be able to get uh, a wider variety of x-rays right there at the Schaefer Medical Center. 
cool. in our orthopedics area than, than you're able to get in the past. Oh, that's so, always helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Don't have to go back and forth. Yeah, you know, there are some things now that we can't do there that, you know, you just see the doctor, you got to kind of show you across the parking lot. And, and although that's not horribly inconvenient, it's just going to be much nicer for the doc to be able to do the image, see it, see it, and talk with you right then. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. It'll be a nice thing for the community. Um, we've had a lot of surveys in the last couple months. Our laboratory department just went through their CAP accreditation, and and that's their national certification, uh, basically saying that they meet all federal expectations and in quality. And uh, they did a very good job with that. So I want to thank the laboratory team and all those who helped. Uh, Emily uh, Scouten did an amazing job working through that process. Um, that was last week. And then a couple weeks before that, we had our federal um, rural health center um, assessment. And that's a Center for Medicare and Medicaid, mm -hmm. uh, CMS. Um, that is a survey that we do every three years. And they come into every one of our physician practices. That's a rural health clinic. And... Boy, you know, it, it's kind of like having your mother-in-law over going through your cupboard. <laughs> um, I, that, that's the best I can say. God, I hope my mother-in-law's not listening. Uh -huh. She'll but, be over tonight. <laughs> but they go through everything. They, they check every, uh, everything you have for outdates. And boy, do you have a little crack in the ceiling or anything nicks on the walls. And, and um, it's a pretty stressful and, and fun time for us. <laughs> um, but we did that a few weeks ago. And, and I want to shout out to... Every single physician office that we have, all of the front office staff, all the medical assistants, um, Woodlawn was one of only a few in the entire country. We passed with six 100% perfect scores. Awesome. Um, it was a two and a half day um, assessment where they went to every one of our buildings and just went through everything. And um, we got back our uh, it's exemplary status. So it's the highest you can get in the country. And what that means is, is that um, we don't have any issues to worry about with quality. I mean, they do a phenomenal job. Yeah. Everything from the laboratory testing they do to simply the um, informing the staff of what's there, the patients of what's going on with COVID or anything out in the community yeah. that can harm them. Um, just amazingly proud of that group. They did an awesome job. Good deal. So, Good deal. so much so that we're going to be asked to do a, yeah. uh, a presentation of that to the Indiana Rural Hospital Association um, to kind of show other people how we did it. Uh -huh. So, very, very nice. Yeah, that's pretty elite. Yes, very much so. Um, maternity Oasis. Mr. Fisher and, and the uh, community have talked about that idea over the last couple months. So, we've seen a lot of hospitals around us um, downsize their OB departments. And um, Woodlawn is now a maternity oasis. We're a facility that still provides excellent quality OB care, kind of right in the middle of uh, people that don't. Um, <laughs> so all around us, we're seeing those changes happen, and we're proud that we're able to keep that going and, and uh, grow it, actually. So I brought Alyssa Morrison here today. She's our director of the OB department, and to talk a little bit about a couple things going on in the OB area. Awesome. Well, good morning, Alyssa. Good morning. Sounds like, uh, you know, you've been busy. We have been. Our numbers <laughs> have definitely been picking up. Uh, well, tell us what else is going on. Uh, Brad has uh, kind of given a little tease there of uh, some changes. Uh, what else is happening? So we have been blessed this year with our community foundation, or our Woodlawn Foundation has pitched in um, quite a bit of money to give us a refresh. So we've got brand new paint, some new fixtures, things like that to make everything just look so much better and fresh and we're excited about that we're also offering um lots of classes now we've got a baby 101 class that talks about infant safety how to care for your kiddo once they're home and that's open to not just new parents yeah. but grandparents and you know caregivers all of that we have the regular prenatal classes that get people ready for having a baby yeah. and the whole process <laughs> Um, breastfeeding classes with uh, internationally board certified lactation consultants and then we've got some mom support groups that we've got to just help out afterwards to you know ask questions and just kind of find that community um, we're offering tours with our new refresh and with some of those recent closures in our area we want to just get people in and you know see what we have to offer see that quality 
that we can provide for them. And um, everybody can sign up on our website for those tours or they can call the hospital and get everyone scheduled for those. It's kind of neat that, uh, like you said, Brad, also uh, that you'll be able to just keep it going and grow it. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, for any community to grow, uh, children are going to have to, you know, be had. And, Absolutely. And, and, and it takes a, uh, you know, it takes away when, when nobody in the area is able to, you know, be able to host that. And, and for Woodlawn to be able to do that for not just Fulton County, but other counties now that obviously don't have that, that's, that's big. It is. It definitely is. And we're, we're happy to be able to provide that service for all of our surrounding community, not just Fulton County, but, you know, Marshall, Cass, all of the places around us. We're happy to be there for them when they need us. Brad, what makes it Woodlawn different that they're able to keep that going and grow where you see others that uh, are having to close theirs down? You know, I, I think first and foremost is we have a, a board that is absolutely 100% um, focused on Woodlawn, remaining Woodlawn, um, which is an independently owned community hospital. And the thing that that gives us that's different than the others is we can do things in our community to meet their needs without requiring outside approval. Um, if we can do it and manage it financially and, we can, and uh, we can take care of it with the right staffing, the right training, all those kinds of things, um, we can keep it here, we can keep it growing here. Uh, a lot of these other companies uh, around us, they don't have that luxury. Decisions are made outside of the, the town or sometimes outside of the state. Yeah. And so uh, we need that. I mean, Indiana, for those who don't know about it, is on the lower end of the spectrum for infant and uh, maternal mortality rates. Um, we need to do better as yeah. a state. If you look at every four years, <laughs> one of the governor's plans, that is almost always on their plan to improve. And boy, it's awful hard to do that if everybody around keeps shutting down. Right. So now you have a mother who may have to go instead of 15, 20 minutes to get to somewhere to do a delivery and emergency situation, 45 minutes to an hour. That's not pushing us in the direction right. of improvement for the whole state. Right. So um, boy, any hospital that's out there that's doing OB, keep it going. With yeah. Your community and your communities around you, they need you. Yeah. 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 So that, uh, you know, again, we talked about uh, the, the tours, uh, you know, scheduled because that's, those are big and you gotta make the, uh, the mother and, and the family comfortable and, and having a tour uh, beforehand is, is uh, probably uh, big for them. Definitely, and even just meeting the staff and getting some familiar faces for when they come in, it's, yeah. you know, it's always, it's an exciting, but just, you know, terrifying time for some people to expand their families, to have that whole process. And so anything that we can do to make them feel comfortable and, you know, cared for, that's what we want to do. You know, it's neat too that uh, not only that, but you're talking about the, some of the, the classes for after uh, the baby's born and after the baby gets home because uh, you're, some of these parents are new parents and not sure quite what to do. So it, it's great to see those classes as well. Absolutely. We just, we want to make sure that we are there for the entire continuum, not just, you know, we don't, we don't stop when the baby's born and we send you home. Yeah. We want to make sure that we care for them afterwards too and that everybody is safe and happy and healthy. So. Right, we've been talking about this refresh for a couple months, so it's nice to see it done and, and ready to, to welcome uh, uh, all these new parents in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Alyssa was saying, you know, get online and, and check us out, and that's woodlawnhospital.org, woodlawnhospital.org. Um, also, just get on there and check out our new website, everybody. If you haven't had a chance here in the last couple months, boy, it's just a breath of fresh air. It looks beautiful. It's easier to navigate. Um, you know, we've jumped into that... Uh, 21st century finally <laughs> and uh, we really really would like you to get out there and check it out well it's no different than uh, what you might do at your house you know obviously uh, uh, after a few years you get tired of seeing the same thing so you might refresh move things around new furniture new paint it's kind yeah. of what Woodlawn's done absolutely it, it looks very nice yeah, everybody come out and check it out good what else do we have this morning oh just to refresh uh, uh, everybody's memory um, we have made some changes at the hospital regarding wearing masks um, so when you come in the front door make sure you check out whatever the current situation is um, right now you'll see many of the providers aren't wearing the masks because we're at that point where we're able to 
and uh, patients the same way. You shouldn't See, have to wear faces. those. <laughs> uh, we only ask that you wear them if you're currently experiencing respiratory problems and that may be the reason why you're there. Um, or anybody who wants to wear them to protect themselves and feel safe, absolutely. They're still there and available. Um, that's a fluid situation though, so I wanna say, you know, today you may go in and everything's working well and you don't have to wear a mask and boy, we're happy to see that because now I can see when people are not really agreeing with me a little bit better. <laughs> um, I can see their facial features a little easier. Um, but that may change depending on what happens in the county. Right. And so I think that's something that we all need to remember is that our decision at Woodlawn Hospital is based on what's going on in our county not necessarily statewide or nationally. Yeah. So we'll flex that decision based on how things are looking. And that affects then the outlying offices as well? Yeah, anybody that would be a Woodlawn facility, okay. um, we will follow that same guideline. Awesome. So as awesome. of right now, things are looking good and we're able to see those smiles. We hope to keep it that way for a while. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Anything else from you, Alyssa? I don't think so. I think that we've gone over that. I just would really yeah. encourage everyone to reach out um, for these classes. We're excited to be able to offer them, excited to be able to see all of these, the new patients that we're taking mm -hmm. on and the people that we're delivering again for their third, fourth babies even. Yep. Um, we're very excited to get them in and to show them that refresh and to just be here for them when they need us. Appreciate it, Brad. Thank you. Absolutely. We'll look forward to talking to you again next month. We'll see you next month. All right. Thank you. Woodland Hospital with their monthly report here on Giant FM.